Uh, I rise to speak on the matter of public importance, a matter that is indeed of great public importance, which is the right of every Australian to be protected from speech that offends, insults or humiliates on the basis of race. On the basis of race. Uh, that is Labor be Labor's belief that every Australian has that right to be protected from speech that offends, insults or humiliates on the basis of race. By contrast, this Abbott government believes in the rights of the bigots. The Abbott government wants to legitimise, encourage and empower bigotry. The Attorney General's stated rationale for the government's proposed changes to the Racial Discrimination Act is to protect the rights of the bigots. As he told this Senate so famously already on Monday of this week, people do have a right to be bigots, you know. People do have a right to be bigots. For even for a government which seems to specialise in backward-looking policy, in aggressive and bullying politics, uh, this was an extraordinary step and a retrograde step. Mr Deputy President, we in this country have built a remarkably tolerant, democratic and free multicultural Australia. But we all know, we all know there are still the bigoted and the prejudiced amongst us. We all know that their conduct can humiliate, belittle, hurt and damage people. And that is why collectively we have agreed to the protections contained in the Racial Discrimination Act, and that is why those protections are needed. And it is also why people in leadership positions have a responsibility to stand up to bigotry and prejudice. In this place especially, in this place especially, we have a responsibility to denounce racial prejudice, not to defend it on specious grounds, not to encourage it by our actions or by our silence, and certainly not to legislate in its interests. Mr. President, yesterday, Deputy President, yesterday the Prime Minister proclaimed reinstating the British honours would add a grace note to Australian society. And on the same day, the government released legislation to allow Australians to be insulted and humiliated on the basis of their race. Well, this is not a grace note. This is an ugly note, a jarring note of discord. It will encourage bullies. It will create division and intolerance. It will damage the fabric of our society. And most importantly, it will hurt people, real people, individuals who will experience real pain. So in the Senate this week, as I've said, we saw the first law officer of the land stand up loudly and proudly defending the rights of the bigots. This really revealed the ethical framework that lies behind this legislation. It reveals the philosophy which is driving this government to seek these changes, a philosophy which prioritises the rights of the bigots to say what they will ahead of the rights of individuals to be free from harassment. It puts the rights of bullies ahead of the rights of victims of bullying. It gives the professional loudmouths, the prejudiced, the ignorant a license to trample all over the marginalised, the powerless and the vulnerable. This is a warped set of priorities and a warped philosophy. Professor Andrew Lynch of the Centre of Public Law at UNSW has said today, law is an instrument through which a community's values and rights may be given effect. In Monday's debate, Senator Brandis came down firmly on the side of those who would give voice to racially motivated insult and offence over those who are targeted by such comments. I acknowledge that there are many good people uh, in the Liberal Party who have taken a stand and shown leadership against racism and discrimination. Uh, people like former Liberal Prime Minister Malcolm Fraser, people inside the Abbott government who have spoken against uh, the changes to the Act, like Mr Wyatt and Mr Laundie. But the Prime Minister and this Attorney-General uh, have uh, revealed with this legislation that they are ideological throwbacks. They are prosecuting the agenda of the narrowest of sectional interests imaginable, the sectional interest of a single powerful columnist, a columnist whose opinions are amplified daily by the resources of one of the world's biggest media corporations in the world, a columnist who ev evidently wields considerable power over this government. His interests are to be put ahead of the interests of so many Australians, ahead of the in interests of Indigenous Australians, ahead of the interests of immigrants and the children of immigrants. One person's agenda is being allowed to trump the interests of Australians who seek to live in a decent and tolerant society. And we have seen this failure on leadership of leadership, we have seen this failure of leadership on race from the most senior figures in the Liberal Party before. Because when the, the Attorney General responds to criticism of this legislation by saying, people do have a right to be bigots, you know, 
Now, he is echoing someone we all remember. He is he's doing exactly as former Prime Minister John Howard did at the time of Pauline Hanson. At the time of Pauline Hanson, let's remember when Pauline Hanson called for multiculturalism to be abolished and claimed Australia was being swamped by Asians. What was the response from the then Prime Minister? When he was asked whether Asian Australians should be protected from people like her, he said, well, are you saying that someone shouldn't be allowed to say what she said? I would say that in a country such as Australia, people should be allowed to say that. Well, he defended her right to speak freely, but who didn't he defend? Who did he not defend? He did not defend the rights of those she attacked to be free of vilification. And when senior political figures in this country engaged in this kind of manoeuvre, it sends a bad message. It sends a message that it is acceptable to rail against those who, lo who look different. And this is a, a point I made in my first speech to this place in 2002. And I am distressed and I am angry that this is a point that still needs to be made today, because we always need leadership on issues of race. And it is not about denying free speech. It is about asserting the harm done by racist speech. It is not just about laws and legal protections, it is about the message, the message influential people send to the community. And the message our Attorney General has sent is that those who are marginalised, victimised and harassed are not a priority for this government. So when he says to Senator Peres, people do have a right to be bigots, you know, he is empathising with the bullies and he is showing callous disregard for the vulnerable. It is moral equivocation and dog whistle politics masquerading as support for free speech. This remark from our Attorney General shows he does not appreciate the need for leadership in a society where people experience bigotry. Because, Mr Deputy President, I have seen bigotry face on, and it's not a pretty sight. Words have an impact. They hurt. They do lasting damage. Not only the words of the bigots, but also the words of those in leadership positions when they defend the rights of bigots and stand by silent. Mr President, the Attorney General, as Australia's first law officer, has a responsibility to show leadership of, on these issues. And what, instead, he, we have seen him fail the test of leadership by bringing forward these retrograde proposals. We've seen him fail the test of leadership in choosing to defend the rights of bigots rather than stand up for victims. And I also say in this place, we see him fail that test in the way he conducts himself in public debate, because he has a predilection. This Attorney General has a predilection for getting personal, a predilection for personal attack, for denigration and denunciation. We all remember his disgraceful claim in this place about there being a criminal in the lodge. Uh, and then also we remember this morning uh, when he was asked to respond to the Shadow Attorney General's argument that the exemptions in the government's proposed Section 18D were so wide he could drive a truck through them, he responded, well, I doubt the Shadow Attorney General could drive a truck through anything, frankly. Personal denigration rather than principled debate, abuse rather than analysis. Uh, and I won't even deign to respond uh, to his, attack, uh, his accusation of me of bigotry. Extraordinary and false. Frankly, Senator Brandis's predilection for going personal are the tactics of a bully stuck in the sandpit of student politics, not of the Attorney General of this country. Mr um, Deputy President, what is the public benefit in removing legal protection against hate speech? There is no conceivable public benefit in enabling blatant racial attacks. How does it benefit our Australian community to make it easier for people to vilify others because of their race or ethnicity? How does it de benefit our community to defend bigotry instead of tolerance? It does not be benefit our community. In fact, it damages and divides our community. And there is really very clearly two sides in this debate, very clearly. And we on this side of the chamber, the Labor Party, we stand with the community, with the ethnic groups, the Indigenous Australians, hard-working migrants who have come to Australia and helped build this nation because it is a free and fair society. And on the other side of this debate, we have an Abbott government who stands uh, with a powerful journalist, with libertarian ideologues and with the defenders of bigotry. Mr Deputy President, I have said before in this place, prejudice and distrust cannot build a community but they can tear one apart. Thank you, Senator.